You gonna read from your phone? Yeah. Okay. Do 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 do. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello there. We're going to give everyone just a minute or two to get in before we begin our teaching. In the word of the Lord on tonight. Hey, Miss Linda Joy. Hello, hello. Those of you who are also joining with us live for the first time, you can type new here and uh, go ahead and share with your followers. And we're going to get right into the word in just one minute. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Linda Joy. Thank you for inviting your followers. We know time is money, money is time. We know time is of the essence, so we don't plan to keep you all night. So thank you all again for coming in. Thank you, BBT Things, for joining us. Please swipe and share with your followers. <laughs> yep, nope, not new. All right. <laughs> so Pastor Robert and I are uh, gonna do a little tag team teaching tonight and uh, Pastor Robert is going to go ahead and give us our opening prayer. <laughs> our Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for this this beautiful time, this beautiful day of memorial, remembering all those who have fallen in the act of service to defend the country, yes, Lord. but most of all for us as your kingdom citizens, for the kingdom of God, Lord, we just want to take a day to remember all those who the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, laity, all those who have served with honesty and integrity, who have gone before us, oh God, to pave the way for what we have now. God, we ask that you just look upon the families of those, oh God, and even the family that is here now, that is alive, and taking this next generation of spiritual warfare and spiritual activation for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Yes, we Lord. We ask you to strengthen us. Yes, Father. Keep us, O oh God. Help us to stay true to our mission without compromise, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. So, Lord, even as we go through this message tonight, this yes, teaching Lord. that uh, we are going to do, Lord, bless the ears of the hearers, bless the hearts, let actions and spirits be encouraged by what you want to share tonight, oh God, so that we can continue to exercise and do excellent work for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray and give you glory. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you to those who are coming in. If you will swipe and invite your followers. Also, you can copy the URL. And so if you are on Twitter, you're on Facebook, you can also share there. Um, we're going to get right into the word tonight, the word of the Lord, um, as well as uh, hopefully share some insights with you. We do know that this is a word for kingdom-minded people. And so some of you we know are going to get it. You're going to be able to run with it. You're going to be energized and encouraged. And then some of us, it might take us a couple of more months to uh, catch on to what the Lord is saying. But we do believe that it is a word of the Lord for the church and for this, for this time. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're talking about tonight the church and the oil. Um, many people, and we'll get into some of the phrases that people like to use, um, but many people talk about the oil of God or, mm. you know, this person has the oil on their life and that sort of thing. So a couple of days ago, God began to wake me up. And last night he, wake me, he woke me up and gave me actually part two of what I'm going to share with you tonight. But he started out by saying, the church has left the building. The church has left the building. And he said, I am calling the believer to infiltrate, to dominate, and then to replicate. So, of course, that got me out of my sleep because I was like, whoa, you know, mm -hmm. what, is, what is God talking about? Mm -hmm. And then he said, America doesn't know what hit her. Neither does the church. And so God said that there was a shift that happened. And um, most of you who have, have followed our teachings know that we've been talking about this shift. But it really started to take place around 2012 where God really began to say, I'm shifting the church into this new dimension, into this new 
kingdom life dimension. Now we know for years people have been preaching about the kingdom of God and they've been saying, you know, the kingdom of God, kingdom principles, but God is now saying it's time to not just teach those principles, but it's actually time to start stepping out into that kingdom activation. Mm. Okay. So it's not just for us to sit in church and keep hearing about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. When Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. All right. And so the Lord said that America mm -hmm. is a woman intoxicated by her own press. Mm. Hear me. America is a woman intoxicated by her own press. And I was like, okay, God, you've got to unpack that for me. And what he was showing me is that for so many years and for so many um, ages, America has seen herself as this jewel, as this crown, as this woman to be admired. But God says we have become intoxicated by our own press. And that the way he is looking at America is not the way America sees herself. Exactly. And so that becomes a conflict because if you don't ever see yourself, right, as a country, as a nation, if you don't ever see yourself in need of repentance, if you don't see yourself in need of change, then you're going to keep on going in the same posture and in the same habit. And even as the scripture says, without warning, destruction will come. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing, one thing we look at, too, is that in the secular realm, you know, America, as we all know, has been broadcast around the world as the most powerful nation on earth. And even that the national and the United States president, uh, the president of the United States of America, is considered the leader of the free world. So what we have taken that on as is that with the church or in organizations of people, social clubs, all these things that people want to call as church, we've taken on that same mantra thinking that, you know, the American church is the superpower of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, we get these <laughs> mega church congregations, a lot of people um, doing things, you know, coming, assembling together. But in honesty, when you look at it from a world perspective, you know, some may differ. But America is probably the weakest nation spiritually on the face of the earth. We may have the largest churches. We may have the largest amount of income flowing through churches, uh, you know, organizations. Uh, we have the Catholic organizations, the social organizations, all these things. But we have the invasion of darkness that continues to pound upon America. So with all this spiritual forces that we that we say we have, being the leader of the free world, why are we having so much trauma happening, as I call it, the beehive is right in the church. So that's one thing I want to share. Go ahead, Shantae. Mm -hmm. Pastor Shantae. And so part of what God said after that was he said, I want the church to be prepared to leave the building. Leave the building and become my kingdom expressed in the earth. I want the church to be prepared to leave the building and become my kingdom expressed in the earth. Many of you all don't realize, but a lot of pastors are selling out their congregations. And I don't mean like metaphorically, I mean literally, that there is going to come a time that the same places that we look to for safety and for sanctuary, those places will be turned into disaster pit stops. And let me tell you. Wow. When they're turned into those disaster pit stops and you're told by your leader to go to this disaster pit stop and everything's going to be okay. Well, understand history. That is one of the things they did to the Jews. They told the Jews to... Get on this train. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to a different place. We're going to take care of you. And when they got them off that train, they took them directly into a con concentration camp and they killed them. And I want to say this too as well, if I interject. Mm -hmm. Just as a, even today, I was looking at something today and what came up on uh, some of my news articles was, you know, the late Justice Antonin Scalia. 
one thing he made a, a statement about is that mm-hmm. he definitely said that, if I pronounce it correctly, internment camps, mm-hmm. and they are for sure will come back. Yep. Now, this is one of the revered Supreme Court conservative justices, justices mm-hmm. of the United States of America. He's passed away. Um, just another whole story. But what I'm saying is that he would, you know, the Supreme, the United States of America, God help me, is not the kingdom of God. Amen. <laughs> the United States of America as a country is not the kingdom of God. Nope. The people who love God, serve God, and serve Christ, accept the Christ as Savior in within the borders of this country is the kingdom of God. So therefore, we must say that the leadership and the organizational structure of this United States of America is not intended to bring glory to God. Is not. If you look, if Shante would get into this early, I mean, a little later, but if you look at Revelation 6, the, um, you know, the Antichrist, the one, there's a, there's, a, there's a verse 6, I believe, verse 13, chapter 13, verse 6. There's one thing, uh, one string of things that the that the Antichrist is there to do. The main thing is to blaspheme God, to blaspheme His name, and to blaspheme those who believe in Him, and to blaspheme those in heaven. So the key word is blaspheme, mm-hmm. and that word is to make a mockery of. Mm-hmm. So when you have a leader of you, of the free world, would stand in the place. And declare that things that God has ordained, particularly like male and female, that that is not so. That is coming. That is blasphemy against our Lord God. No matter how you may want to perceive human individuals, we have to understand that the the, the kingdom of darkness and the and its rulers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Is coming out of the closet in full force. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that we cannot sit there and think that your country will protect you in these times of chaos, as I call it. But anyway, I got more to share on that. Let me try to go ahead. Go ahead. And so we don't, in other words, we don't have time to waste. We don't have time to have praise breaks be the primary core of what the church is known for. I'm going to say that again. (laughs) We don't have time for praise break videos to be the primary core of what the church is known for, right? God is calling the church to mobilization. So he asked the question, where do I want my body today? I want my body everywhere. I want my body mobile and global. This means that you've got to be in a position to move when God says move. You have to be in a position to share the gospel when God says to share the gospel. And God is really speaking to his ecclesia, his called out ones, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he said, I want them to proclaim the good news in business, in trade, in the arts, in medicine, in finance, in education, in engineering, in industry, in architecture. Listen to this. Without the garb of an old guard. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. uh-huh. He says, I want you to infiltrate. I want you to dominate in that particular field and space. And then I want you to replicate my kingdom in that sphere and space by ministering the gospel, ministering the good news of the kingdom through that area that he's given you a specialization or a skill in. And he said, I want you to do it without the garb of an old guard. Yep. And if I share something real quick, mm-hmm. I will say this is very important for us to understand now. God wants us to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. He wants to infiltrate our culture, not assimilate our culture. Mm -hmm. If someone write down infiltrate, not assimilate. The difference is infiltrate means that you take the potency of God, you bring that into those environments, and you let God be released in those environments. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's to infiltrate. 
To assimilate means that you go in there and you act like they do, you think like they do, you dress like they do, and you behave like they do. That's what's going on with the church today. One of my sisters in the Lord uh, was saying that at a Hillsong conference, mm -hmm. that there was an issue where there was supposed strippers as a part of the set. I saw it today. It's called the Naked Cowboy. You know, as a part of the set. Now, what on earth does anything have to do with deroping yourself have anything to do with the glory of God? I saw the video. It was a youth. It was a youth pastor. Yes, it was a youth pastor at Hillsong New York City Color Conference, which is their women's conference. And um, the youth pastor came out on stage. Yes, you saw it too. The youth pastor came out on stage with um, looked like boxer briefs on, and he was bare chested. And then they had a flag kind of draped around him a little bit. But how is that appropriate for the kingdom of God? Zero. 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 It's not. And he was imitating someone known as the naked cowboy that, I guess, walks around New York City. But again, when we're not kingdom minded, exactly, he doesn't need to be around kids. I actually agree with that. When we're not kingdom minded, we allow anything to go. Because I went to the gentleman's Facebook page myself. Because they gave his name, and I went and looked at his personal Facebook page. And if you look at his personal Facebook page going back to 2011, you know that this person has some serious personal issues going on, and they shouldn't be leading young people. That's all I'm going to say. And so, what we're the point of the fact of the matter is that that's one case example. I mean, we had another case example where a woman came to church and she was dressed with lingerie. And we got pastors trying to simulate a sexual experience in a pulpit to try to stimulate sexual activity amongst the married people. Those things are not of God, okay? We have to understand is that we are fighting tooth and nail uh, to our culture, uh, I mean, to bring God to our culture. And what happens is, this is what the Lord is dealing with me about. He's dealing, the world has no respect for the church mm -hmm. because why should I go there and proclaim Jesus to do the same thing I'm doing now? Because the church is doing the same thing the world is doing. So they're like, what on earth? Why do I need to leave shacking? Why do I need to leave this kind of way? Why do I have to leave being a homosexual? Why do I have to leave being, you know, a fornicator when they're doing the same thing in the church? I don't need all that extra stuff. I can just be free right now. It's less weight for me. So in other words, the church has made itself irrelevant. Irrelevant. To our culture, they say in the church, the old garb, this whole thing about mm -hmm. this organization of a structure, to be socially cool, to be socially acceptable. You know, we have to go in and act like, you know, worldly people in order to seem like you're cool amongst church folk. That is not of God. Amen. And God's coming for that. He is coming for that. Yep. Okay, go ahead. So. And so, no, you're good. And so the, the thing that the Lord said at the end of this, as I was just listening to him and writing down some things, he said, I want my people in right standing with me, practicing true religion, which is to care for the widow and the orphan. If you're saying that you're religious and you're not caring for the widow or the orphan, what kind of religion are you practicing? Because that's what the word of God boils down what true religion is. It's caring for and serving. Thank you. It's caring for and serving the widow and the orphan. The fatherless and the, and the woman without the husband. Okay. And then he said, I'm giving new technology to overcome ancient demonic stratagems. Mm. So be ready to receive. Yes, 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 yes. I yes. am giving new technology to overcome ancient demonic stratagem mm -hmm. and be ready to receive. And so I believe that those who are receiving this word tonight, that God, even as we're teaching, God is going to download to you some new technology, some new strategy, some new ways of doing things so that you can defeat these ancient demonic strategies that right. have been loosed in our country. Mm -hmm. If you're noticing, even on the national level, 
right? You have senators, you have congressmen, you have governors now who are scrambling to try to figure out ways to defeat the new demonic strategy that has been unleashed on America. Mm -hmm. See, understand, they were looking for the LGBTQ agenda to come several different ways, but they were not looking for it to come through a restroom bill. They were not looking for it to come through a letter given by our president and dispersed throughout the public schools. Across the country. See, that was a different stratagem that America was not ready for, that got unleashed into our nation. It wasn't a law, but because our president decreed it, because he understands the decree. The president who the people love. Mm Mm-hmm. The president who the people love. Because our president decreed it, now people feel they are legitimized in making laws based on his illegal decree. Okay? Right. And just let you know, a a president cannot make a declaration across the country. The president is not a lawmaker. mm -hmm. Let me just just get politics right. Yep. The president is not a law maker he is a he's signer to execute he's a the signer and a, and, and a officiator of the law in other words laws are made he signs them into action mm-hmm. when they made the american disability the ada act okay you about disabled people and stuff like that it wasn't a president who made that law it was him who signed the bill into law Mm-hmm. Our Congress makes laws, so therefore, someone sponsors a bill in Congress, whether it's you know, for, you know, legislature, then in the Senate, okay, you know, the House, then the Senate. And what happens is, when that law passes the House, it goes to the Senate. When it passes in the Senate, you know, what I'm saying, then it goes to the President. He can veto it, or he can sign the bill. And for him to veto it, even the Congress can override his veto mm-hmm. if they have a two-third majority vote. So mm-hmm. therefore, there's no way America was designed where you cannot have a unilateral maker of law. That was the whole purpose of why the country was made. So Checks now, and balances. Right. So now that we have a demonic entity established through our presidential current president, many presidents had these issues, but this current president is emboldened itself to become as a unilateral decreer. And what happens is we have... Congress and all these different agencies succumbing to that issue is no different from the days of Nebuchadnezzar. Everybody said he makes a decree. Everybody has to bow to this image. Mm -hmm. If you don't bow, you burn. Mm -hmm. But we declare tonight that we will not bow and we will not burn. So that's what I'm saying, America. We are at that state where we have to have the indignancy and the diplomacy of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. They were young, they were full of God, and they were not compromising the things of God, and they were expressing that in a very diplomatic way. Yep. So this is the mindset, this is the, 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 the mentality that we must have as a people of God in this hour, because that same spirit, God showed me this nine years ago, that Nebuchadnezzar will be the spirit of Babylon, you know, that image, okay? That that statue that Nebuchadnezzar made, it was the top half, you know, was was uh, was Medes and Persians. I mean, it was Persians and Babylonian. The bottom half and the torso, I mean, in the uh, midsection was basically Greco-Roman. So you have a combination mm-hmm. of America where you have Islamic culture, Arab culture invading and leading. And you have secular humanism, which was a Greco-Roman leading. So you have a president who is merging merging these two together just as the Nebuchadnezzar's image. And that's what we're dealing with today. And that's why America, the church, and America has bowed to that image. That's why the kingdom and this country is not, I mean, excuse me, the church and this country is not a part of the kingdom. Anyway, go ahead, All right. So, old norms are shifting. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Please swipe and invite your followers. This is 
a prophetic word. We know this is more than a word for just here. We know this is a word for our nation. Old norms are shifting. This is what the Lord said. Churches, hear me good. Churches led by Greek ideology will shift. Mm. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked. Churches led by Greek ideology will shift. That means those who are involved in those Greek systems of operation, the divine nine, the boule, whatever you want to call them, God said those who are operating in that who will not give up their allegiance to it in order to truly lead the church. He said he's going to shift them and you're going to see it. You're going to see leaders, churches led by Greeks. He said, I'm going to shift them because they will not give up their allegiance to those false gods and truly lead the people completely in the word of God. And let me say this too, okay? We have to, I mean, sometimes we have to really understand some very foundational things, okay? The Romans and the Greeks work together. The mm -hmm. Romans are the ones who executed Jesus. Mm -hmm. Pontius Pilate was Roman. Greek, Roman and Greek culture is what had the authority to be able to destroy the things of God. So we have that system that we're saying that we want to use Romans or Greek as an aspect of church and their whole mission was to destroy God. So what makes you think that any Greek system or any Roman system will be able to enhance the glory of God in any organization. It will not. You may have good social life. You may have good connection with political systems. You may have, you know, you may get uh, policies. You may get funding and things like that. But that is a system. And what happens is, God, oh God, Satan is the prince and power of this world. If you look at Revelations, you understand that technology, government, Politics, finance, religion, and education are aspects that the beasts would have control over. The Antichrist will have power over these things. You will not be able to eat, buy, or sell unless you come part of these systems. And they're already proving that with firing people because they won't receive or go with a certain idea ideology christians are losing their businesses they are literally being sued into bankruptcy sued into bankruptcy not even for doing anything i mean because not even for they refuse to bow to the systems right you got folks like uh like uh kenny uh, uh kelvin cochran he was a, a a fire chief in atlanta he did not even say do anything discriminatory to anybody he just wrote a book on his own time from his own church that had one little paragraph out of the whole book that dealt with immorality mm -hmm. from a sexual standpoint. And he went through all the aspects. And that little piece of the book is what they immediately fired him and they dared him to try to sue the city. Mm -hmm. The mayor came and made a defiance and said, you da I dare you try to sue us. He lost his job for nothing. Nothing on his record. He had an impeccable record of human uh, of, of human resources working with different people and we're doing excellence in his job. So what happens is no matter how excellent you are in your field or how whatever it is, as long as you name the name of Christ, that Greek, that Roman system will not allow you to stay. Mm -hmm. If you have a, if you have a question, I'm going to ask if you would email us in our profile. It has life nation KC at gmail.com. If you will email us your question, we will get back with you and oh, respond. Yes. yes. All right. Here's the other thing the Lord said. Bishoprics. Roman. Tied to the Pope. Will be shifted. These are people who are under a Roman system. And some of them know 
they're under a Roman system. Some of them do not. But if that bishopric, because not all of them are, but if that bishopric is tied to the Catholic Church under the system of ecumen ecumenicalism, it's going to shift. It's going to shift. Because ultimately, if they are tied to the Pope, the allegiance that they have is to the Pope. Roman. Roman. If order. the Pope says, I need to I need you to submit your church to Roman Catholicism because they are under that system and because that's who ordained them, they're going to submit. So how are you going to be in a church that's, you know, Episcopalian or Presbyterian or Baptist? Because some of them are tied to the Roman Catholicism. And your bishop comes to you and says, hey, guys, guess what? We're all going back to th the Pope. Because that's what's ultimately going to happen. And if you don't believe me, just Google the Pope's warning to Protestant churches to return to the papacy. The papacy. It's already going on. So these are things that we as, as, the, as the body of Christ, as kingdom people, we need to understand that these things are already on the way, underway, and are going down. Then the Lord said, those who have been operating in confusing doctrines, I am going to shift them. For example, he said, it is very important in this hour to understand who is behind the message. For example, a man who believes that women should not preach or teach will teach a different gospel than one in the scripture. And those who are called to a shifting reformation, God says, you're going to begin to be able to hear more clearly. And we're going to talk about that, why you're going to hear more clearly. But you're going to be able to begin to hear more clearly when opinion is being laced in with the truth. Exactly. Because God said, my sheep know my voice and they hear my voice and another voice they will not follow. So... As you begin to listen, whether it's on television, whether it's in your church, your ears are going to start being very sharp and very keen. And you're going to be able to begin to separate whether or not that person is teaching the word of God or if they're teaching the traditions and doctrines of men. OK, because that is what has been happening. But God says, I am going to release my sheep from the confusing doctrines and they're going to be able to hear clearly what I am saying to them in this hour. Then he said, confusing churchisms. These are things that people say that are not necessarily uh, along and aligned with scripture. Okay. And one of the main ones that people say is you don't have to promote your gifts because your gifts will make room for you. If you've heard someone say that, I think I've heard it twice in the last 48 hours, <laughs> that you don't have to promote your gifts, they will make room for you. If you've heard someone say that, just tap the screen. Okay? But then at the same time, they will say, don't hide your gifts. Don't sit on your gifts. Right? So which one is it? First, you're telling people, you don't have to promote your gifts. We'll figure it out and your gifts will make room for you. But on the other hand, you're saying, well, if you're sitting in my church and you have gifts, don't hide your gifts. God wants to use your gifts. And so there's this, this very confusing directions being given to the people of God. And it really is confusing because some people are like, okay, I know I have gifts. I know I have skills. I know I have talents. Do I not tell the pastor? 
do I tell the pastor? Is that making me seem like I'm ambitious? Yes, and, and as the person just wrote, that some people will try to kill your gift, right? But this is what God said. He said, gifts make room when people know you have them. Uh-huh. Can I interject? Yes. Okay, one thing we have to understand is that we really, really got to not be stuck on stupid, okay? <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's something about um, foolish behavior that seemed to become a norm in church leadership, okay? Now, when you have, if you have a, if you're a team, and a team has different functions, like basketball, we have a big championship going on tonight, okay? You know, <laughs> we know what's going on with that. But you have a point guard, you have a, a, a guard. You have a center. You have a forward, mm -hmm. and you have a center. Mm -hmm. People work, and they go into various areas of operation based on their skill level in that capacity. Mm -hmm. You go into any business, you have a CEO, you have a president, okay? Sometimes that's the same person. You have a C, you know, C -E -C -F -O, it's chief financial officer, you get a vice president, you have directors, okay? And then you have, you know, like departments, you have like, you know, if I'm in architecture, we have various things. So what happens is if someone has a skill mm -hmm. in a various area, then you need to understand, you put a resume in for, an, or they put an advertisement out based on we have this particular need. So send us your resume that is persistent, that's consistent with what this need we have. Okay, in the church, there are specific needs in the church. Mm -hmm. Very specific. So people coming in the church, you should be able to understand where their gift set is. So that you may know how to be able to activate that and have that to be greatest use for the operation of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so people don't know anything. That becomes ridiculous. Right, and the scripture says plainly, to know those who labor among you. Know those who labor among you. And just as Pastor Robert illustrated so wonderfully, right? No one goes on a job and then doesn't bother to assess the team. Hmm. If you're on a job... One of the first things most jobs do, especially in corporate America, is they give you a skills test. They give you a personality test. They give you a leadership test, right? They assess your gifts, your skills, your strengths, and your weaknesses. But this is what the Lord said to me. He said, the old order of the church does not do this. The old order of the church does not do this. He said, you can sit next to someone for 20 years on a pew and never know what they do for a living, never know if they're married, never know if they have kids, never know if they have extended family, never know if their relatives go to the same church as them. He said, you can only get away with this. And this is what he called it. He said, you can only get away with this non-relational behavior in the church. Not I wish I had an organ right there. <laughs> you can only get away with non-relational behavior in the church. And the Lord said, for what is coming ahead, for what is coming up against the kingdom, people, we have got to know each other. I mean, how on earth are you going to have an army, a military, how on earth will you have that if you don't know what the skills of each person or if you access each person? How are you going to go there on the battlefield and not be able to access a person? We have got to know each other. We have got to know each other. The good, the bad, the strengths, the weaknesses, the skills, the talents, the anointings, the power of intercession. We in the body of Christ in the kingdom have to get to know each other because when we are in warfare, right now. not just the warfare that's here, but the warfare that's coming. Mm -hmm. When we are in warfare, that's not the time for me to try to figure out who's got what skill 
that we need in order to attack something and to have good success in it. You'll be slaughtered. Okay. So this is what the Lord said. He said, I am sending in this hour, and I, I hope leaders hear this. He said, I am sending mature believers to different houses across the country. He said, some people are relocating. I told them to get up. I've told them to move. I've told them to move to different cities. I told them to move to different states. And he said, I am sending mature believers who are already equipped to do the work in the house. So leaders, please hear this. God said, I have been sending mature believers and some of you leaders have been putting them in pre-K. I'm going to say that again. Lord. I have been sending mature believers and some of you are putting them in pre-K when they arrive. Rather than mobilizing them to mobilize groups of tens, groups of hundreds, groups of thousands. So that means you're holding up your own progress because God says, I'm sending you mature believers that you don't have to go back to scratch with so that you can have acceleration in your ministry. Then he said, if you look at David, Okay, when the when the men of God came to David in the cave, they came, they were disillusioned, they were depressed, um, all of those different things were going on with them. But David did not take those men and make them wimpy men. He made them mighty men. Amen. And so God says those men had skills. David just honed them. David began to train them. So that those skills became of greater use to the kingdom and they were able to do exploits that we still read about today. And so the question God has for you is, why are we making people restart and hazing people that God has refined, he has purified, he has proven, and he has qualified them? So we have got to stop making people restart when they come to our ministry because we have an ego problem. Right. That's really what it is. I want to prove you. I want to see what you can do. No, 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 no. God is sending you mature people so that he can accelerate what he wants to do in your ministry. He is sending people who have been refined by the fire, the refiner's fire. He has been sending people who have been purified with fuller soap. He has been sending people who have been proven and who have been qualified. I want to say something. They're not, they're not coming as vagabonds. Mm -hmm. They're coming as people in ministry who have stood the test of time. So we're not talking about rebellious people just showing up at your ministry. No, we're talking about people that God ha has qualified. And if you want to see acceleration in your ministry, then let the ego go and say, God, how do you want to use this person that's coming that you have brought this gift that you have brought to me to mobilize my ministry and move us further. And I'm gonna say this too, like when I change jobs, uh, very powerful deal. Man, you know something? I built up abilities, okay? They saw my resume, they saw my work. That was what blew them away. They saw they were blown away by my work. Okay, and next thing you know, so we got they they let they wanted me to come in. So on the very first day of the job, not even the first day, the night before my first day, I get an email. And not do they sit there and say, well, you got to learn all these procedures and start over again from baby steps. They gave me an active project that they needed to release out into the environment. The very first day on the job, I started that morning on this new work. Mm -hmm. And it transformed how they do things in that firm. Okay. And, because, how, and how long had the, had the work been sitting? The work been sitting for like two years. Mm -hmm. And they had me in there, and it helped me, and me coming in helped propel the work forward. 
So that's what we need to understand when people come into the ministry. We are, they are there. You access the skills so the ministry can move forward with areas that have been stagnated or areas that needed more, you know, dusting off. That's what this new life is. New life is there to bring new strength to areas that are weak. Okay, that's why the American church has lost its savor because it's so busy playing games and dancing rather than activating the work that they're called to do. That's people don't want to, I don't I don't want to go to a circus. The circus smells. You know, I mean, if I want to go to a circus, I go to Ringley Brothers Barn and Belly Service or you know, what's that thing? You know, the big circus. The soul the, circus. The soul cir- universal Cir- circus. Universal circus. Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying is that we have to understand is that we, you know, the enemy looks and laughs at the Christians in America. They look and laugh. They see you up there fussing about a pew, a name on a pew. They see you fussing about who's going to lead a song today. They see you fussing about, you know, what kind of dress or what kind of clothes someone has on. And they got, he got 10 generals over there sitting there taking over your whole community while you fuss about these two little tidbits of stuff inside. Okay? No. God says he's going to shift that. And y'all weak, bad saints, he's going to move you away. When Joshua had to go fight, there's some people that had to stay home. And there's some people that had to war. Some of you are going to be sent home. God says some of you all will be sent home because you will not, you are not an act, you are a liability of war. Mm. And he will not have a liability on the front line, so you've got to go home. So don't be surprised if you see people being deactivated, whether it's physically or spiritually, because they have been a liability to the body of Christ. I'm not just talking about small, so I'm talking about major people in the body of Christ. You're going to see deactivations because they have no power. Where they are. And God said, I need to put a person with power in this area. Joshua could not fight. The, he could not win the battle because of one person's hidden situation. Mm-hmm. Hiding stuff. Oh, God. Aiken. The Valley of, oh, gee, the Valley of Ai. That's a whole nother story. But let me let Shante get back to it because I could go off on a tangent on that. Go ahead. And we're getting ready to shift into the next part of this because we're, we're talking about the church, but we're getting into going to get into the oil in just a minute. And if you have not shared, please go ahead and share with your followers. Okay. The last thing that the Lord gave me about the church is Paul sent Timothy. Paul sent Timothy and many others with these words. He sent them to give offerings. He sent them to equip churches. He sent them with letters of correction. But this two words that Paul said, that God says to the leaders of his church. Paul sent Timothy And here's something that he asked people to do. Two words. Receive him. That phrase needs to come back to the church. Because when God sends someone, we have to say, receive. Receive. Receive them. Plug them in. Plug them in. Let the power flow through what they are. Plug them in. So do we need to take a commercial break? <laughs> so that- uh, do y'all, let's, let's take a commercial break. We will come right back. Give us two minutes. We will come right back with part two of this. The church and the oil. And this second part, we're going to come on and we're going to talk about the oil. What is that? What does it mean? It won't be as long as this section here, but there are some very uh, revelatory things that God shared with me about the oil for the believer so that as we go moving forward, we will know exactly what we're talking about. And when we hear people say certain phrases, we'll be able to have a better understanding behind it and also bring some correction to it. So I do thank you all for being on this segment. Again, we're going to be back in two minutes. 
please go ahead and follow us so you can get the um, live notification. And we're going to come back with part two, the oil. Thank you guys.